In this video, we reveal the top habits you can adopt to save time, increase efficiency, and improve the quality of your laser projects. Getting your warp materials, typically wood, to lay flat can be a real challenge. Over the years, we've tried everything from clamps, tape, weights, you name it. There's really one simple solution, but it does require that you have both a downdraft cutting table and a good exhaust. If you put your warp material on the table and then cover all the other exposed areas around it, you can create suction that will force the material flat. You're probably thinking, but the material you're showing is super floppy, so of course it sucks flat. That's true. I used a double-sided adhesive sheet as an example because they're always really bent, creased, and warped. However, I have been able to get really warped quarter-inch wood and acrylic to lay flat with this method. In fact, this was one of the selling features touted to us when we purchased our first Trotec laser. I'd used this technique before, but it only worked so-so with the smaller exhaust we were using. I was told by the Trotec rep that their Atmos Duo exhaust filtration units were really powerful. So I took an extremely warped piece of 8th inch wood with me to their office for a demo and watched how it sucked flat to the table. I absolutely hated dealing with warped wood so much, I was pretty much sold when I saw that happen. This may not work for all lasers, but it has for every one we've owned. This also assumes that your laser automatically homes itself when you start it up. When the laser is off, you can typically move the head freely by hand. So what we do after we clean our machines each day is to move the head back to its home position. When we start the machines in the morning, the little dance they do happens faster if the head doesn't have to move the length and width of the table to get back home. Yeah, I know, it doesn't seem like that much time is saved, but to us, it matters, so it might to you too. We have multiple lasers that are started multiple times per day, depending on how many production runs we're doing. Every little bit of time saved per machine helps in the long run. Also, I think maybe there's a psychological effect here too. I've sat there mentally willing the machine to start faster so I can get a job going, so I could then move on and start prepping the next laser. If you've watched our other videos, then you know this is something we talk about all the time. We use a lot of application tape to cover our materials prior to cutting and engraving to keep the surfaces completely clean from burning. This tape can be applied by hand, or even better, applied with a cold laminator. We'll provide links in the description below for some of our choices of application tape, and also a link to the laminator we use. We'll include a link to our more in-depth video about this process in the description as well. We like to add paint to a lot of our projects, and using application tape on our materials makes that so much easier. We use it in two ways. The first is for the ever popular post-processing method paint filling. Just mask the material, engrave out your design, and while the mask is still applied, rub, brush, or spray paint over the engraving. When you remove the mask, you'll have outstanding results. The second method is to apply the mask to the material and then use the laser to very lightly cut your design in it. You then remove the pieces of mask to expose just the areas that you want to paint. And again, when you remove the mask, you should have perfect results. If you do use application tape on your materials, then you might find that removing the mask can sometimes be a bit of a challenge. We've learned that it's better to keep your material mask for as short a time as possible to make removal easier. The longer it's on, the stronger the bond over time. If you have a lot of mask parts to peel, we found that by using mask from a previously peeled part to start the next one can make the process go a lot faster. On intricately detailed parts, applying a high tack tape over the entire design will help lift up the very small pieces of mask. We use an aluminum tape that has a very aggressive adhesive and we can really burnish it down onto intricate designs. We've been told that using Gorilla brand duct tape will also work well for this. Yep, 
You can not only use your laser to make and decorate parts, but it can be a great way to quickly mark parts to aid an assembly. For example, we have often used it to outline areas where we want to add glue. This might not seem necessary if you're doing your own one-off project, but it can be very useful if you're producing a lot of kits that require assembly by other people. And since I was talking about gluing pieces together, another hack I'd add to this, though not really a laser hack, are clamps. A super cheap and effective clamp that works great for bonding thinner materials together are regular office type binder clips, particularly the medium and large sizes. You can get them online on Amazon or at any office supply store. If you're sending multiple designs to the laser to engrave, or even one design that has widely spaced areas to engrave, planning out how you send this job can save you a lot of time. Since your laser is going to move the width of the design you're engraving, if you can get these elements closer together, or engrave these elements as separate jobs, you can speed up your processing time. For example, if I was to engrave two parts at the same time, I wouldn't place one at the far left side of the laser and the other at the far right side. I'd want to have them as close together as possible to keep the laser from having to travel further than it needs to. As another example, if I was engraving, say, two eyes on a large face, it might be faster to engrave one eye at a time, eliminating the time the head needs to travel between the eyes. If you have a large laser job, or running the same type of job on a regular basis, then creating a jig or a jig tray can really speed up your production time while also making sure you get consistent results from each production run, whether you're running them back to back or on different days. Having multiple jigs made as trays also lets you preload them outside the laser and in certain remove them from the laser faster. You can find a link to our jig tutorial in the description below if you'd like to learn how to make your own jigs. You can get some neat effects from purposely defocusing your lens when cutting or engraving. We like to use it to get a nice thick, dark line marked on wood really fast. If your laser software has the ability, you can sometimes even set a Z offset. For example, your laser will go in and do what it needs to do, cut and or engrave, while in focus, and then it will drop the work surface down to your predetermined Z offset, putting the lens out of focus so you can mark the surface. Or maybe you mark out of focus first and then the laser moves back into focus for the rest of the job. If your laser doesn't do that automatically, it's not a big deal to manually put it out of focus if needed. Anyways, uh, defocusing is pretty cool. Okay, this is more of a tip than a hack, but we really wanted to include this. Save you work to save yourself or your business. In other words, back up all your work. Frequently, every laser software we've used has some way to create material profiles, has a library, etc., and has a way to export them to back them up. Do it. If you're using jigs, then you should have files to recreate them, and also template files that match to them for your engraving jobs. Save copies. If you're like us, and have a laser business where you can't afford to be down for a day, then back it all up to your computer, network, NAS device, whatever. Better yet, make sure it's backed up to the cloud if you can. If you can't, then physically get a copy of your backup off-site. Then make sure you have a process that keeps your backup current. It's easy to get complacent and assume your backups are running or think that your backup is recent enough. Be diligent. Over the years, we've had enough computer issues, floods, plural, and theft to teach us the necessity of backing up files. If you saw our backup strategy, you'd think we were being a little paranoid. If you're not a graphic designer or artist, then this one's for you. Save yourself some production time by getting yourself a library of vector art. You're dealing with engraving, not printing, so you want those black and white images that can be ungrouped and worked with in an editing program like Illustrator, CorelDRAW, or even in some laser software like Lightburn. 
I think you can find a lot of old-fashioned, boring clip art bundles out there, but even better, you can get some original artwork from us. And since it was designed by our in-house artists and graphic designers for our own laser jobs, you know they're laser friendly. We have a lot of designs now, and we're constantly adding new designs on a regular basis. We'll have a link in the description below where you can get them if you're interested. Thanks for watching. There's a link in the description for access to all the designs and files shown in our videos. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to get notified of future projects. We have more videos coming soon. Stay tuned.